Hey guys, Joe here, some VR Labs, and I just wanted to show you um, quickly how to start this thing with my new enhancements. Uh, first of all, you'll notice it, it loads with the pilot, but in VR I don't like the pilot, so I'm going to go ahead and hide him. Right? When you hide the pilot, the cyclic works well with the VR controllers. With the pilot there, it's got some crazy like animations going on for the knees and stuff, and the arms and everything, so it, it's not tunable for VR controllers. Um, and so, uh, we'll just get that out of the way. Um, and there's a, like I said, it's a click spot right up there by the compass, right? And, uh, yeah, so you'll notice a lot of custom sounds on this that I've added to it. And basically the whole start, shutdown, and, and engine monitoring sequence is, uh, fully custom. And, um, also not super forgiving if you abuse it. And so I want to show you how to uh, start this thing without like hot starting it, right? So you'll notice there's a, this throttle here and uh, there's a white dot and there's a collar right here, right? It's kind of popped out right now. And if I take the thing and I roll it, right? So now the collar is popped in. That's a spring-loaded collar. That means now it's in a position to, to give the turbine fuel. And then the rest of the way, you notice I can't go back. It's like an idle stop, right? So all the way back is flight idle. And then if I want to go back further, I pop the collar by clicking right here, right? Or I can assign that uh, to uh, a command on your joystick. You can assign it to a button. And then when you, when you push that button, you can roll back. Now, if I'm all the way up here with my uh, throttle and I click the collar, you'll notice, watch what happens with the white dot it jumps down to just under where the collar would pop and you'd pull it down through. So it's just kind of a help for you. If you have this assigned to an axis on a joystick, what you would want to do is um, is at about leave yourself about 25% of travel on your joystick before you pop the collar. So it doesn't really matter where you're at. Just don't go all the way to the bottom and then pop the collar because then you won't have any room to roll down and actually cut it off. It doesn't cut off when you pop the collar, it just allows you to be able to roll back in to do it, right? So that's kind of how that works. Um, so uh, let's get started. You have to start this um, very realistically. Um, it's not like, it's not easy like the other one where this kind of like auto shoots in when you push the starter button. Uh, I'll show you why. So you go ahead and click the battery on, um, and then you click the auto uh, reignition. Um, that way, you know, if, if the engine's running and, and you're in one and in two and everything just start going down, it tries to relight it, right? So you can test it right here. And you hear the sound right there. So we'll turn our auto collision on, um, let people know we're about to start. We're going to go ahead and put this, the fuel in. And then uh, I want to make sure this is down and cut off right here, right? So um, I don't want any fuel going to the thing yet. Um, to the turbine. Now you'll notice that if I click the starter, nothing's happening. That's because that starter relay is not powered up. And that's because the key's not on, right? So the key is now modeled. Turn the key on, it uh, it allows the starter to go. Now when I hit the starter, I'm actually going to do it with two hands. So I'm going to, this is kind of like realistic. Um, I'm going to push the starter with this hand, or you would do it like with a mouse, or you could assign the starter to a, a button on your, on your, on your joystick. And then, um, I'm going to be watching this right here, this uh, N1, right? So 15, when this is 15, that's my sweet spot. 14, 15, that's my sweet spot, right? Anything less than 14, uh, it's you're getting into the danger zone of hot starting. Uh, less than 13, you're almost for sure going to hot start. And the reason is because you don't have enough fuel in there. you got a lot of air in your turbine, but not enough fuel. And when there's not enough fuel... The, the fuel-air mixture uh, is going to be really, really hot, right? Because the fuel actually helps cool it down, believe it or not. Um, it's just like EGT, right? So uh, so let that go to 15. Now, what's that look like? So I'm looking for the big needle. When it gets close to 10, now I start watching the small needle. So with every 10 that it hits on this, the small needle makes one full revolution. So I know once it's hit 10 and it makes a revolution, and then when it comes around to about the bottom here, that's 15, right? So I know I'm good there. If it's if it's went around at 10 and then it only comes to about here, that's only 12 and that's not good enough. Now it happens kind of quick, so you have to kind of be on the ball with it, right? So I'm gonna use two hands, I'm gonna grab the throttle with the one and I'm gonna hit the starter with the other. And I'm just gonna pay attention here. 
There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Gonna go just like that. So you go forward to where it stops, and then you come back to, this is basically flight idle. So I went back to flight idle. I can't go back any further unless I pop that collar. So I'm good to go right now, back at flight idle. And I was watching TOT. You needed to be watching TOT. Make sure it doesn't go above the, uh, make sure it doesn't go above the red. So if it would have gone above the red, you start counting to 10. You got 10 seconds for it to come down below the red, right? Otherwise it's gonna hot start. If it goes above 900 here, so 800, like 50, there's like a dot. If it goes above 920, you have one second or it's gonna hot start. And I'm telling you, if you don't have enough, if you light this thing off uh, with your N1 too low, you don't have enough fuel in there and it's gonna hot start. Um, so you'll notice that oil pressure is running pretty high. Uh, that's about where it runs normally uh, during a flight phase, um, but it's running high right now because the oil temperature here is low. Uh, we started out with uh, ambient temperature on the oil, uh, so basically it's pretty much matching the air temperature, right? Um, and it's going to gradually come up, and when that gradually comes up to about 70 or 80 degrees Celsius, this will start to drop as long as I keep in the the idle zone right if I get above the idle zone the pressure is going to stay up pretty much but uh, in about you know two three minutes that would be high enough and this would come down uh, you kind of want to give this thing a little bit of time anyway to to get warm um, so uh, you'll notice my generators out I forgot that was a check you do um, if so if I turn that on and the engine was out I would hear beep 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 another check you do is obviously check your check your lights here um, I don't know if you noticed, but as I was starting, a couple things happened, right? Uh, this dropped down and got pegged. This is the battery. The battery pegged. And then when it hit, when it, uh, the N2 and the rotors hit about 40, um, this battery just kind of gradually drops back down. It's still pulling hard, but it does. it's not fully pegged. As it starts, you know, going, going faster, it doesn't take as much amps uh, to make the movement happen. Um, so I can go ahead and I can um, roll this dude slowly up. Another change I made, I'll show you in a second. You'll notice there's like the the green and the red dots right there, right for where you should beep it to. But um, I went ahead and made the uh, the governor pretty much put it right on the nose so you don't have to beep it that governor knows where it needs to be right and now she's ready to fly and then when I want to uh, shut her down then I would turn the governor off roll her down now you're supposed to give it a couple minutes um, at idle give it a couple minutes to settle in but um, you can go ahead and pop the collar and I can go ahead and roll it down. Now you're going to hear some beeping. The reason you'll hear beeping is because the engine's out. You'll see the engine light come out and you'll see the transmission light uh, will come on. The engine light out and the transmission light out will come on here in a little bit. But you'll hear the beeping because I have the generator switch on while the engine's shut down. Right? So there's generator out, engine out, transmission out, oil pressure. Or yeah, transmission oil pressure's out etc. Now, a couple things are happening now that I've shut it down, right? Um, this TOT, this is the turbine outlet temperature, this is what you want to pay attention to too so you don't hot start, right? This needs to be at 150, right? Or less before you start or you're going to hot start. So the way to bring this down is to motor the engine. Motor the engine means you run the starter with the fuel cutoff. I could either have the cutoff in this zone or I could pull the valve and then hit the starter. When you do that, the turbine outlet temperature is going to go down. The reason I say that is because when you first shut down, the engine's spinning. Now when the engine's spinning, it's sucking air and it's knocking that turbine outlet temperature down, but it's not enough to cool it off because my engine's slowing down, so it's not sucking as much air. It's really hot, right? So it's not going to keep it cool, right? So when you shut it down, this thing's going to eventually rise back up. Now it's kind of a slow rise, but you'll notice it hit 150, and now it's going to take about two minutes and it's going to get up to close to 400, right? And then it's going to slowly, you know, take 
15, 20 minutes to drop down into a place where you can actually start it again without hot starting, unless you motor the engine, right? So I can let this come back up, and uh, I can make sure my fuel's cut off, which is all the way back. It's all the way back, collar's out, and I can push the starter. And when you do, you'll see this TOT will come down, right? It'll come down to a place where, okay, you know, now it's down there, and now I can light it off. It's under 150 if I wanted to, right? So that's it. When you shut down the battery, you'll notice that these shut down. Uh, the oil temperature wasn't high. We never let it run long enough, so you won't see it swing down. But you'll see the fuel. Um, they're not getting, they're not getting power, so they're eventually gonna come down. So that's another thing is when you want to check your fuel level, don't trust it until you turn the battery on. Um, as far as VR goes, I went ahead and I tuned up every manipulator for VR. So if I come in here and I grab this, I can just roll it on and off. All right, that's just sort of a power. But then you can see like the, if I just roll my wrist, it's nice and it's good. You know, it feels good. All these feel really good and all these are workable. Um, a lot of custom sounds you heard though you heard the door right uh, you can thank Nick Bates for most of these sounds um, he uh, these are these are real world sounds in real world uh, helicopters so it's it's great it's fantastic um, uh, perfect so that's pretty much it and uh, everything's behaving really nicely for me right now uh, everything's behaving pretty realistically so uh, another thing is when you the oil pressure so the oil pressure um, is not going to shoot up like it used to um, it's going to stay pretty much down here at about 10 and 20 until you light off and then when you light off then it starts rising up it won't rise up until you light off so that's pretty realistic pretty much everything on here has been recoded right to uh to uh just be more realistic um and i've had i've been running with some Run it by some real world pilots. I mean, Nick and Joe Hudson and other guys have been giving me advice on how this all should feel and act. I'm not a real world pilot, but I just have enough skills to kind of tweak and do this kind of stuff. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, that's how you uh, start it, shut it down, and uh, look for it soon uh, on the org and on uh, the Sim VR Labs Club. Thanks.